I'd like to, to uh, go into a little bit of the symbolism of the Lord of the Rings. I think it's um, very interesting and very important. You have the all-seeing eye that, as you can see, looks a lot like a sun, with what appears to be a portal to a very dark dimension in the middle, the slit. It seems to more obviously represents the pupil, although this symbol is very cryptic. Like I say, when you're talking about psychological truths, you're forced to be cryptic. But yes, no one can see Sauron. He's either wearing a mask, or he's just an all-seeing eye on the top of a tower. You don't get to see him, because it's a symbol for something. He's not a living, breathing person. Tolkien is trying to tell us something. Something that is purely psychological. That which sees, but cannot be seen. And those that are bound to him, the quest for the one ring, the kings, the ring bearers, a secret society who are looking, trying to find the one ring, trying to rule the world, but they will never rule. It will never be them. They are servants to a power they don't understand. Small players in the greater scheme of things. That's a truth they really would not like to hear. Two Towers is an ancient and very mystical symbol. I have a large book on ancient common symbols and not so common symbols, and it mentions nothing of Two Towers, even though it's on a tarot card. Recently, Jordan Maxwell was explaining that a sun rising between two towers, or in some cases actually two mountains, represents this new age that we are now in, the age of Aquarius. And um, from in his belief, it's something very negative. Um, although personally, from my understanding at the time, it's not necessarily something negative. However, the two towers, I think, is when the negative comes into it. If you look at this image very carefully, you see a sun, although it's mysterious and it's hidden. They managed to work in a sun between the two towers the Tower of Sauron, and the Tower of Saruman, which is the closest one. You have the Tower of Saruman, that's close, who was a wizard helping to look over the world, protect the world, and then in the distance you have the new tower, the Tower of Sauron, who is going to try to um, control the world in a new age of darkness. So you have an old tower of power and a new tower of power and the sun in the middle. The rising of a new age, cutting an invisible line. I mean, think about it, it's, it's in between. You have a tower of power of the past and a tower of power for the future. Old with the old, in with the new. And what are insiders, supposed insiders, witnesses for the New World Order, Illuminati subjects, um, what have they been talking about? the collapse of an old power and a handing over of power to a new group, a new Illuminati. And what is this symbol telling us exactly that? From my perspective, that's what this symbol means. I'm not saying I'm absolutely right, but this is my opinion. And this is the hero of our time. A solitary man, in darkness, unappreciated, misunderstood. The warriors that are being appreciated are fighting wars that should not be fought. They're unjust. So this man does not go and fight in a war because they're unjust. The real battle against the real enemy is not being fought yet. And so he does not become, you know, the king, a symbol of greatness, because he is forced to wait until the right time before he can do anything. And of course, I'm speaking here in terms of metaphors. To me, a sword represents one's inner power, for example. The future will be saved by those who can see. The eyes of truth, because they are open, and they are taking in what is for all its beauty, and all its hurt, and all its horror. The eyes that see will free the world.